Hey guys, I got a little Speedy B TX Ultra here. Um, it's supposed to be able to go up to 1600 milliwatts of power. Um, what you get in the box is, you know, the TX on there. Um, it's a little small, feels light. I'm not for sure of the exact weight of it. Um, it can be soldered in or wired. Um, feels nice it's a 20 by 20 i got this to put on the thermal drone that i have that i built i'm trying to extend the range and the clarity and stop some breakup on the vtx i currently have on it that i built in a previous video and hopefully it'll work well for what i need um i'm gonna add this in with the corrections and the modifications on the drone I'm doing right now but you do get a little short cable for an antenna that you want to put on specifically for you as MMCX connections and you also get the little small linear antenna I'm not for sure yet what I'm going to try to do and I might play around with this and try the linear antenna versus an omni but i probably won't because i got a larger omni i'm going to put on the build and you get a set of wires as well in case you want to solder it in not for sure of which way i'm going to go with that right now either but um it's probably going to be just wired in and i'm not going to do the solders in case i got to move anything of that nature because i am adding a GPS to the drone so I can try the altitude hold and the position hold on Betaflight 4.6 and the drone's doing well right now flies well I got about 11 minute flight time on the last test and I'm just trying to get up a little bit more altitude all right something else to be aware of before you mount it if you're just going to double sided tape this to your frame, uh, be careful because I was going to do that and stick the tape on this side to mount to the frame to keep from having to go up under my ESC, but it looks like I'm going to take that a different route. But if you're not careful, this thing separates very easy. It kind of like snaps in just barely, but then your whole framework or circuit components will be... Um, could vibrate loose and you could have it short so just be careful of that but like i said you could put it in and set it back down on there and it just sits on top of the little helmets and just a little light snap but be careful of that because it could cause an issue if you just tape this to your frame a lot of us do that with vtx's but I would securely mount it if you have this side to the frame. And that was my plan to keep the solder pads from shorting on anything because I'm going to use the plug. And this right here says 7 to 28 bolts. So it should take up the 6S. But the plug, when you look at this side, says 9 bolt. And I guess that's just because that's what they recommend. That's kind of like 7 to 28 bolts is what it's supposed to take. But... They just say 9 volt because that's sort of the happy medium or a good working voltage. As you can see here, just pay attention to these settings on the values. Um, as you can see, the 2500, 200, 500 beside the value, you have to increase those. I got this BTX table offline. I believe I dropped it off of one of the sites. And also believe the preloaded settings from Betaflight did the same thing. Increase those to match the bottom line. Make sure on the max line, bump it up to 1600. Well, y'all, I had to make a little change to this thermal drone I built. Um, my Moonlight VTX overheated when I lost the drone, so I couldn't get it back right. And I just took a pro kit I had on here, so now I got a pro camera on here i like those cameras better anyway due to the low light they're better than the moonlight to me um for my my tx 1600 
Speedy B VTX. I bought a long range minion. I hung it up under the drone. I'm going to try this out and give it a try. And because the antennas or the signal from the walk snow is just too strong, I think um, I'm going to see what happens with this and give this a little test light. Um, but I'm going to have my antenna for my walk snail up high on top of the drone and then my VTX and antenna for my analog thermal camera is going to be under the drone so I'm hoping that'll block some signals um, I was just trying to get rid of the flashing light that happens in the thermal video you seen from a previous and I got return to home working correctly with the GPS now I got a HGL RC M100 on here I'm going to put this up to max. I know I was getting 900 milliwatts around that, and I'm going to see what kind of range I can get on this analog thermal setup, but you might see my walk snail video in the process of them swapping over. Make sure everything's okay, because I only went about 500, you know, three to 500 feet before, but the return to home worked perfect, and I'm just hoping it works when altitude hold its button is activated. And because I'm going to be using that to look for the deer or, you know, so when I got the altitude hold activated, I'm just hoping the return to home will still take over and override that and take it up to the altitude I want it to, to avoid trees and things of that nature. And this thing returned to the spot where I took off before I had 16 satellites and it landed less than a foot from where I took off. So... Um, it was a smooth flight back, no bobble, no nothing. I'm going to be trying to record all the flight footage I can. All right. All right, guys, here's the takeoff with the walk snail. Um, I just love walk snail video. It's just awesome. This is on the Pro Kit V2. Here I'm flying out and going to get my altitude so I can put on the altitude hold marine steady now I'm about to flip over and you'll see how long it takes for the delay so now we're coming up on the analog with the thermal and you can see the flashing and it's just aggravating I wish we could get by that but it works perfect on another analog screen I got so I'm pretty sure analog goggles would not show that I've already posted it try to figure out maybe something they can do hopefully they'll see it do an update and get that problem solved because the camera's working perfect, VTX is working perfect, but those flashes are just aggravating. You can't really track deer or anything like that with that going on. I do fly out here and I catch back over and I'm going to, I'm just testing a little difference. I got out to a little over 1100 feet on this run but I'm going to replace that antenna and I think it can do better. I had like the linear antenna was working out almost as far as well. And here we go. We're just going to come up on it in a moment. And I'm going to swap back over to my walk snail. And this is all deer mid-flight, so it works perfect. I'm thinking about trying my HD Zero goggles to see if I can get away from this flashing or just order me a pair of recons or something. So I can see the real deal. Here goes the swap, I believe. So yeah, we're in the swap right now. And this is, you have to go through the HDMI stage. So it takes a little longer to get back to the walk snail. And here I am out and you can see my meters and everything and fly out once I cut it off and I tried to come back but I couldn't get my analog to catch so then I swapped back over flew back in and then got it up but I'm going to activate GPS rescue on this flight as you can see altitude hold and now I'm flipping back over trying to get my video and then I ended up with the blue screen because I was either out of range or my analog was not connected correctly off of my expansion pack but 
I flew back in some and I was able to get the video back up. Here I'll go flopping back over. This just shows you how long it takes to get the video transferred back over from goggles to analog. And that's Goggles X. But right now I'm out a good ways. I mean, and I just, this is on 200 watts with analog. I mean, with. Walk snail, I'm sorry. 200 watts and I got out this far. So I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get a lot more range. I do have a Truex uh, matchstick on this thing and it works well. So I think these two antennas are going to work great when I get me a new mount and I get everything set up right. So I'm flying back in now just to try to make sure I get good video back up. I'm going to turn up my middle watts on my walk snail so I can get out a lot farther better. When I'm flying at night, I'm not going to be able to use this unless there's a little bit of lighting in the area or some moonlight because the Pro camera does work well in low light. I just want to get past that flashing on the thermal part. Now I'm going to I'm going to activate the thermal again, and this is where I turn on my GPS rescue and GPS rescue on Betaflight 4.6 is working awesome right now and you can see that now it's on the rescue mode it's going to fly back and land perfectly i mean it it's always within five feet so far of where i took off so i got faith in this system now i'm going to get a little bit more brave and go out and try some further flights at night i'm just wait, ready to see what it'll do on the deer This flight, I did end up with over 1,100 feet on the analog, and I believe it'll do better. I was just trying to swap it out, so I just want to show you what it's about, but perfect landing. It even lands better than I can. Straight in, straight down. Got my hover set just right. 